Welcome back to Scalebodge Not Built. In this episode we're going to start building Tamiya's new BTO1 chassis. So we're going to start by using the mid-engine rear-wheel drive setup. First steps. Look like the spare gear casing. So let's get started. Now this is actually going to be a dry build because Tamiya supplied it with plastic bushes which we'll be replacing for bearings at some point. So there's no point wasting the grease on them. The next step, fit the spur gear to its shaft and then into the housing. One thing to note here is if you look you've got two different side shaftings. So the shorter one goes at the back into the spur gear. The longer one goes into the housing. Maybe we should have got two little gaps in there, which the little teeth should sit in. Make sure they're fully seated so you've closed up that gap there and that gap there. That's all right. Next step is mounting the motor to the spur gear housing and the pinion to the motor. Now this is a 22 tough pinion. What are we going to be using? 22, which you can just see there, and one directly opposite.
once you've got it lined up, just about so you can access all. to the chassis. Now you need this piece of foam which you can actually use the manual to get it cut to the right size. the servo and switch mount. This is a dry build so I won't be greasing it. You need to make sure that there's no bits of sprue on the edge once you've cut it off.
of these lugs. Sit in there like that. For the diff housing. So once again for this, out of the pens you're going to want to be using the longer one, not the shorter one. Make sure the pin's fully seated. And then you can install your retaining clip. So once again, a little teeth. See in the recesses here. Once fully seated, there should be no gap between the pin and the housing. Now to put the diff in its housing. Now once again, as I say, it's a dry build because this has come with the brass bushings, which I'm likely to replace with all the hands. So there's no point wasting the grease. And it's only going to be pulled apart again at some point. And rebuilt with the bearings. Now for the rear arms.
Now we fit the rear diff. Now for the rail over on. Now for the rear uprights. Now we fit the rear drive shafts and uprights to the chassis. You may find it easier to fit the one of the joints attaching the upright to the arm and put the drive shaft in. Just keeps everything in place. And you can slot your top arm on. Rear end assembled. And I think it's weird that the rear 
before it's time, but you'll see what happens in a minute. Now we've hit the rear bumper bar. to assemble the front upper arms. should be set to one now. Wrong just like more it. And that looks pretty close. Front lower arms are nice and easy. Get the front of the to it.
now we're on to the shocks. So these are just friction shocks. You probably want to upgrade them to oil ones. But for what we're doing, this will do. Now you're going to want to rotate that four times. There we go. Now we've just got to mount them onto the two halves of the shuttle. Now we're going to mount the bumper. Now it's time to stick the two halves of the chassis together. Serve unmounted, so it should be centered. So let's get that sorted. Now for the back of it.
Going to mount the server. Now for the wheels. But rather than using the kit wheels, we're going to go for something different and use some of my 3D printed wheels. Right, let's get them. Now we're on to the body mount and steering system. Now with the body mounts, if you look at the profile, you've got the lump and the flat edge. The lump goes to the front. When it comes to fitting those, you want the highest part and the smallest hole. So it turns out with this piece, you're better off running a tap down to make your threads. So these screws are extremely hard to get in. And uh, you don't want to strip the heads off them, like I almost have. Once you've cleared the threads out.
So for the time buckles you've actually got this piece which you can slide the turn buckle in. Now remember the threads on these are opposite on one side. remember to take a look and see which way the thread's going. So in the manual you want to set this gap to 11mm. You can measure it but you can also use a manual just to double check. Now we've got the rear body mounts. If you look at the manual they should have a gap of nine and a half mil. So once again, use the manual to check it. So this one needs to come out a little bit. So with the body mounts for this one, the lump needs to be at the front.
last few bits now, which is a steering rod. So we'll set that up. Final thing to sort is a steering linkage. Once again, we can use a manual to check. said about the rear wheels being able to steer. That's where these come into place. These allow you to adjust your toe. So once that's on, because these don't move, it'll keep your wheel in one position. And now we have the chassis finished. So this is in the mid-engine or mid-motored rear-wheel drive setup. Yes, I haven't put the speed controller in there, but we're going to be playing about with the different setups that you can have in the next video, including the front engine, front-wheel drive, and the front engine rear-wheel drive setup. A few things that would have been nice with the kit if it had bearings instead of the plastic bushes and also a little tip for you when you're putting these in I advise you to run a tap through these holes because they're very tight and you do end up damaging the heads if you're unlucky as you can see Other than that, pretty good build. Also, there's plenty of upgrades you can do. A lot of it includes CVI shocks, low friction suspension balls, and a full bearing set decided what body is going to be going on this one yet but so there's a bit more playing about that we want to do with the chassis so thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one